Okay, so before we move on to the next section where we add sounds, uh, we will have to uh, do one more thing. So we need to prevent the stars from lasting uh, forever. Basically, we need to make a game over of some sorts. So what I will do is um, create a new scene. All right, this new scene will just have a background. This background, we will scale it by two on the x and y axis. Then we'll make sure it's a child of the canvas and then set it to be zero zero on both sides. Then we'll come in the textures and get the play button. This play button, okay, so we already added it, so we can then add this play button there. Okay, so we'll set it on zero, zero. Let's see how it looks in our preview. Okay, that's about right. Then we'll add a script to the canvas. That basically listens to see if this button gets, if this button gets pressed. Okay, so we'll call it button and then we'll write a bit of code for it. So all that's going to be happening is we'll, we'll check for an on click. So this dot node dot on and then we'll say Mouse, this should be or even a touch start. Then we'll call a function that's basically going to load a scene. So cc dot director dot load scene, and then inside here we will add. add game okay so let's see what's wrong with this cc director dot load scene capital s okay on top here we'll say cc dot director dot preload scene and then we'll get this Okay, so preloading puts it in memory, then we load it up when we press the start button. So we'll go to the button itself and then add this script button. Okay, then we'll save this as the menu scene. So this is menu, then we'll play and then see what this does. Okay, so let me also change the canvas to factor in the width, then we'll save. Then we'll do this again. Okay, so when I click play, it will take me to our, to our game scene. All right, so um, that's fine. Then, next up, what we can then do is, in the game scene, we want a game over. So we'll come here and then add some source code that allows us to, to do this. Okay, so... We shall do, okay, so first up, uh, let's see, we shall load up a scene. We shall, we shall preload the menu scene. What's this update do? Okay, we shall preload 
the menu scene. So this menu scene uh, is basically where we go uh, when we want the game to end if the user does not collect the star fast enough. Okay, so menu because that's what we called it here, menu. Okay, then of course we want to do a couple of things. So we need to take note how long is this script um, on the screen? How, uh, how long is the star on the screen? So this is basically what we'll do. Uh, we'll start off by getting a timer. Okay, a timer. So this timer, if it exceeds um, a certain amount of time, uh, then we will make it so that the game ends. So this dot timer is equal to zero. Oh my, on screen keyboard. Okay, so this dot timer is equal to zero. Okay, if you don't have a timer declared, uh, you can click on it and then click on the icon here and then it will declare the method like that. Then it's going to show up um, there. Okay, the next up will create a start duration. So this dot star duration, which will also be equal to zero. Okay, again, if it doesn't exist, make sure you click on it. Then the icon that will come on the left side, say declare property so that you have it declared here on top. Okay, then if that's done, you can then um, go in the spawn new star section. So here, uh, we need to add um, um, a line of code that basically checks the star duration, how long the star has been. Um, because each star has to be timed individually. So say this dot star duration is equal to this dot minimum star duration plus, okay, my keyboard is still acting up, math.random, okay, then we'll say times, this dot max, duration okay and then we'll come and say this dot timer will also be equal to to zero this dot timer is also equal to zero okay then we'll come down to our update function um, so we'll say update uh, then in here we'll say if this dot timer is greater than this dot star duration then this dot game over alright return and then we'll add time so this dot timer plus equals dt. Oh my, my update function is missing a dt. Delta time. Delta time. Okay. So all that's happening is if our timer, this one that starts off at zero, the moment the game loads, the star starts 
at zero. This timer is going to be increasing. The time is going to be increasing. And then if the time goes more than the amount of time the star is supposed to last, then it will be game over. The amount of time it's going to last is going to be based on the star duration. So the star duration will factor in the minimum amount of time as well as the maximum amount of time. So for this, we need to come to our canvas and then edit these two. So the max duration, I'll put six. The minimum duration may be four. Then I'll save that. So it's going to be between four and six uh, seconds. That's how long um, that's going to be lasting. So each star can only be on the screen between four and six seconds. Then we'll go to game over. And then in the game over, we will basically stop all the, all the actions that are running on the screen. And then uh, we can uh, load the new scene. So yeah, this then um, this dot player dot stop all actions. Okay, so this is where we'll end for now. We'll try it up in the next section when adding sound. Okay, like and subscribe and if this is helping and then comment and check um, comment and check for the description to see if there are any coupons available for the for the course offer.